There are very few things that you can consume during a fast that are actually going to enhance the effects of your fast. Okay, I've talked about coffee, I've talked about green tea, and I've talked about apple cider vinegar, but today I'm focusing specifically on apple cider vinegar because some of the science that's coming out is absolutely proving, and I mean proving in peer-reviewed journals, that apple cider vinegar can help you burn more fat, but also control your hunger during a fasted state. So we're gonna break it all down and I'm gonna tell you what exactly you can do. You are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. We got new videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, but heck, why the heck not? We're putting out videos almost every single day now. I wanna make sure that you hit that bell button. It's imperative, okay? That bell button is gonna allow you to turn on notifications so you know whenever I post a video or whenever I go live. If you don't turn that on, you won't know when I post a video. So let's go ahead and let's drop right into the science and blow your mind with how you're gonna burn more fat with apple cider vinegar during your fast. Okay, so the first reason that this works is one that we probably already know about. Okay, the acetic acid that's in apple cider vinegar definitely controls your blood sugar. But this is very important during a fasted state, but also very important when you break a fast. You see, I used to talk about different things that you can consume when you break a fast, but I never really added apple cider vinegar to the mix. Now, after finding some of the more recent science, I really wanna make sure that myself and you add apple cider vinegar when you break a fast. You see, here's what happens. It reduces the glycemic and insulinemic response. So basically, when you consume any kind of carbohydrates or anything that's gonna elicit any kind of blood sugar response at all, it decreases the number of glucose transporters. So what that means is if you consume apple cider vinegar along with carbs or along with some protein that can convert to carbs, you're reducing the overall glycemic impact. So let me put it like this. If you consume a bunch of carbohydrates, so they go into your intestinal tract, and then you consume some acetic acid or some apple cider vinegar, it's reducing the number of transporters that can actually take that glucose away out to the body. It's like having a bus station with a ton of people but only a couple of buses to carry some of those people. Okay, it, there's just not enough buses to carry the glucose. So the rest of the glucose just gets absorbed slowly. This is phenomenal. We absolutely need this to happen. So to make some sense of all this, there's a study that was published in the very famous European Journal of Clinical Nutrition, very well-renowned journal. Okay, this took a look at five subjects. So I know it's a small study, but honestly, it's so concrete, it makes perfect sense. So what they did is they had these subjects consume different things, okay? They had them consume 100 grams of lettuce with olive oil. Then they had them consume 100 grams of lettuce with olive oil and some vinegar. And then they had them consume 100 grams of lettuce with olive oil and then pH neutralized vinegar. So it's kind of acting as a little bit of a placebo. It was basically vinegar that didn't have the acetic acid component anymore. It wasn't acidic. After they consumed this lettuce with the oil and the vinegar, they had them consume 50 grams of carbs coming from white bread, obviously very high glycemic. Well, get this, those that had the vinegar ended up having their blood sugar reduced 34%. So simply by adding acetic acid, so apple cider vinegar, their blood sugar dropped 34%. They didn't have nearly as much of a negative effect from the white bread. Imagine what this can do for you when you break your fast. It allows you to not have the crazy blood sugar spike, but it also makes it so that when you are fasting, your blood sugar is under control. It's the rises and falls in blood sugar that occur during a fast that end up making you crave things and can end up making the fast somewhat miserable. But let's go ahead and let's talk a little bit more about fat loss, because that's why we're all here, right? We all want to burn some fat. We want to feel good, we want longevity, but really, we want to burn that excess fat. So let's talk about fat loss, hunger, but something really cool known as AMPK. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with AMPK, because I'm trying to keep this video just short and to the point. AMPK is essentially your energy sensor within the body. So AMPK recognizes when you don't have energy from food readily available and it triggers your body to start using its stored fuel substrates. So for example, if you eat a meal, AMPK is low because you have plenty of fuel to burn off. As that meal goes away, AMPK, being the energy sensor, senses that that food is gone and says, hey brain, this guy's running out of energy. You have to start releasing some of the stored energy. So therefore, the brain tells the body to release glycogen, carbohydrates stored in the muscles, and release fatty acids that are stored in the fat tissue, all for energy. But what ends up happening is when that AMPK is increased, we're of course burning fat, but that AMPK is also released in the brain. And when it's released in the brain, it's making us hungry. Why? Because AMPK tells the brain, hey, 
just so you know, this guy's using his stores. You need to tell this guy to eat because we don't want him using his stores for long. So what my point is here is that AMPK in the body is good because we're burning fat when AMPK is high. But the caveat is that when AMPK is high in the brain, it's making us hungry. See, it's like nothing in life is free, right? We get that nice elevation of AMPK in the body, but we're also getting it in the brain. Here's the interesting thing. Acetic acid has been shown to reduce AMPK in the brain while simultaneously increasing AMPK production and utilization in the liver. Okay, this is like earth shattering stuff because during a fast, this is exactly what you want. You want the upregulation of fatty acid oxidation at the site of the liver, but you want it downregulated the hypothalamus because basically you want to enhance the effects of your fast. You want to burn more fat without the hunger side of things. When the acetic acid from apple cider vinegar goes into the liver, it has to convert into acetyl coenzyme A. This conversion takes a lot of energy. And what that means for us is that that energy balance, that net energy loss essentially, means more fat burning. More fat burning and less hunger. Okay, here's the thing. Like when it comes down to apple cider vinegar, we do know that Bragg's apple cider vinegar is like, they're the, the poster child, right? They're the ones that really started the whole apple cider vinegar movement. We can't deny that. Everybody loves Bragg's. We all love Patricia Bragg, the sweet lady that started Bragg's. I know her personally. She doesn't live too far from me near Santa Barbara. But the thing is, is that they are making a push for their apple cider vinegar. And now they have something that we can consume when we're fasting. Okay, literally something that's created by Bragg's specifically for people that want to consume something that doesn't have calories. So you can consume this literally like this one is a ginger spice. So it's apple cider vinegar, distilled water, it's ginger and some really organic stevia. So this stuff is awesome and it's super simple, but it's made with the good stuff that actually has the effect on the body when we're fasting. But more importantly, it's not going to break a fast. And honestly, you can just go pick up these Bragg's ACV drinks at pretty much any local health retailer. So you can go to Whole Foods, you can go to Smart and Final, things like that, and you're going to be able to pick them up. And if you want to, you can also head on over to brag.com and that way you can check out their full product suite and look at all the different flavors that they have and get yourself totally set up. So let's move on to fatty acid oxidation as a whole because believe it or not, apple cider vinegar does boost directly fatty acid oxidation through how it changes our genes. Okay, not like our clothes genes, but like our genetics and it does this very fast. So don't get turned off when I say genetics, because a lot of times people think, oh, genetics, this isn't going to affect me for a while. I don't really care about genes, yada, yada. No, no. Like, gene expression is happening instantaneously. And if we can change that, we can change the direction in which our body starts to utilize things and does things. You see, when we're fasting, we have the activation of specific genes, okay? SREBP1 and PPAR alpha. The names aren't super important. We're not going to go down that rabbit hole. But essentially, these genes trigger fatty acid utilization and ultimately trigger what's called UCP2, uncoupling protein 2, to overall just be elevated. This UCP2 elevates thermogenesis. Thermogenesis is what we need to burn fat, to burn that visceral fat when we're fasting. Now, acetic acid elevates all of this too. So we have this elevation during a fast, but we also have acetic acid and apple cider vinegar elevating these same genes. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the study. So this study was published in the Journal of Bioscience, Biotechnology, and Biochemistry. Very simple, flat out study. It had test subjects consume either one tablespoon of vinegar, two tablespoons of vinegar, or a placebo. Okay, so here's what they found at the end of this study in terms of body composition and triglycerides. Okay, the group that ended up consuming just one tablespoon of vinegar ended up losing on average 2.6 pounds. Okay, they ended up having a decrease in their triglycerides by 26%. That's just with one tablespoon of vinegar. Okay, those that consumed two tablespoons ended up losing 3.7 pounds, but also had a reduction in triglycerides of 26%. So the nice thing about this is we show that simply by adding this acetic acid, which of course apple cider vinegar has tons of, we were able to see a huge reduction in body fat just by adding that. No changes to the diet. Nothing else changed other than adding that to the mix. So just because there's a lot of crazy stuff out there surrounding the world of apple cider vinegar on the internet, it doesn't completely nullify the fact that this stuff is amazing and honestly is one of the original health tonics that we could possibly ever consume. Like, it's amazing. 
So what I suggest that you do is start incorporating apple cider vinegar in the morning, when you break your fast, but also throughout the day in the way of a tasty beverage. If you want to make one yourself, you can use Bragg's apple cider vinegar, mix it up with some water, mix it up with a little stevia, a little lemon, or you can utilize their super cool beverages, which are pretty much what I would make by hand anyway, and you honestly end up getting them cheaper when you just buy them pre-bottled. So make sure you check them out, and a huge thank you to Bragg's for being one of the starters of the fasting bandwagon in the first place. And thank you to them for being a part of this channel and hopping on the Tom Stelauer bandwagon throughout this process. So make sure you check them out and thank you again. I'll see you in the next video.